Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney with the Quantitative Reasoning Center, and it sure has been a pleasure and a privilege uh, producing this video series for Calculus 3. And the thought that I want to leave you with uh, harkens back to my days as a graduate student. When I was a grad student, I lived in Boston in an area not too far away from Fenway Park called the Fens. And there were all these basketball courts out on this uh, public park called the Fens. And I used to go down and play basketball with uh, you know, the guys in the neighborhood. And this was a very illuminating experience. It was some great basketball to be sure. But I recognized that there were two kind of basketball players out there. And the first kind was perhaps a little more common. These were the fellows who would run up and down the court, you know, but the conversation up and down the court, they'd be arguing about what the score of the pickup basketball game was. So, no, it's 11 to 10. No, it's 8 to 4. You know, yada, yada, yada. And I also noticed that there was a second kind of basketball player out there. Never argued about the score. Didn't say much at all. He ran up and down the court working very hard to put the ball in the hoop. Now, as you consider how you go forward from here, both in the rest of your years as a cadet at the Air Force Academy and in your career as an Air Force officer, I really encourage you, don't be the kind of ball player who argues about the score. Be the kind of player who puts the ball in the hoop. Okay, so we come to 16.5, number 12. And it seems like uh, as I do extra instruction, as we're heading toward uh, the final exam, it seems like cadets always want me to talk about uh, 16.5, number 12. And it says, lowercase f is a scalar field. Uppercase f is a vector field. And then the question is simple. Which of the following expressions are meaningful? In other words, which of them are actually defined mathematically and which ones are undefined? And state for each whether it's a scalar field or a vector field. So the thought process is rather simple and straightforward uh, in each case. So for part A, and what we're going to do as we interpret them is we're going to write them in terms of the mathematical symbols. So part A is the curl of F. And I should have written this a little clearer because that looks like it might be the gradient. Um, so del cross lowercase f. Well, what are the two inputs for a cross product? Well, the two inputs for a cross product both have to be uh, vectors. So f, lowercase f is a scalar field, so that one is not defined, it's not meaningful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of skip the even lettered ones and only do the odd lettered ones. So let's skip B, jump down to C, and C is the divergence of F. Well this is the divergence of the dot product between the operator and the vector field. So yes, this is defined. And when you take a dot product, the outcome is a scalar. All right, having a look at the next one, we have now the gradient operator on the vector field. Well, can we take a gradient of a vector field? No, the gradient operator operates on a scalar field, so the gradient of the vector field is undefined. Alright, as we move along to letter G, letter G asks us to take the divergence, which is del dot, of the gradient of the scalar field lowercase f. So now we need to think a little more carefully uh, can we take the gradient of a scalar? Well, yes, we can. And what do we get? We get a vector. Now, can we take the divergence of a vector field? Yes, we can. And when you take the divergence of a vector field, because it's a dot product, we get a scalar.
All right, letter I. It asks, can we take the curl, uh, which is del cross, of the curl of the vector field F, and we have to take some care with our parentheses. So the curl of a vector field, that's allowed, and that yields an, uh, a vector field. And then, then we, can we take the curl of that vector field? Well, yes, we can. So the curl of a vector field is a vector field. All right, now finally, K, can we take the gradient of a scalar field and can we cross that with the divergence of a vector field. Well, we can, we can take the gradient of the scalar field and that yields a vector. And a vector works fine in a cross product, so this part is all okay. Now, when we take the divergence of a vector field, we can do that. But when you take the divergence of a vector field, you get a scalar. And a scalar can't participate in a cross product and have something defined, so uh, this operation or the total expression is undefined. Okay, well I left the even letters as an exercise for the diligent students and I hope you will proceed with those using the same approach to sort of term by term write it out in mathematics uh, is the outcome of every operation defined, is it a scalar or a vector, and then you proceed in a logical way to the conclusion. So it's been a pleasure uh, serving you this semester through this EI video series. Thank you very much.